In his letter dated 9th December 2020, the chairman of the U.S. House of Representatives Committee on Foreign Affairs, Elliot Angel, made reference to the November 2016 attack on Rwenzururu Kingdom in Kasese District by security forces in which over 100 people died, an attack on parliament by the elite force, Special Forces Command, SFC, in 2017, as MPs debated the scrapping of the presidential age limit, the social media attacks, the arrest of presidential candidate, Robert Chagulanyi, and the shooting of 54 people during the protests in November 2020. Mr. Engel expressed concern over what he claimed was an alarming slide towards authoritarianism in Uganda, which he added was one of the top recipients of U.S. aid and security assistance in Africa. Individual security officers mentioned as perpetrators of the alleged human rights violations include Commander of the Land Forces, Lieutenant General Peter Elwelu, Commander of the Special Forces Command, Major General James Birunji, former SFC Commander, Major General Don William Navasa, Chief of Military Intelligence, Major General Abel Kandiho, Deputy Inspector General of Police, Major General Stephen Sabit Muzei, Commissioner of Police, Frank Mwesigwa, and Director of Police Crime Intelligence, Colonel Chris Serunjoji Damolira. As the world marks Human Rights Day, some legal experts weighed in on this proposal, agreeing with Mr. Engel that the situation is worsening a month to the January 2021 general elections. However, government spokesman of Ono Pondo dismissed that view. I think the message is always clear that if you violate human rights, violate them at your own peril. These officers that we are seeing every day, people are taking videos of people shooting among these people. Their faces are quite clear. That is serious evidence that is going to be used against them. And I'm quite sure right now, people are thinking twice before they do that, because they know we are recording. When the police officers are doing their work, they should know that they should do whatever they are doing in the law, within the law, and that uh, they, can be, they, they can be questioned, not only locally or domestically, but even internationally, okay? Because we are living in the global world now. Our electoral process is credible, is transparent, and is going to give the true reflection of the popular will. Opondo said that Mr. Engel was misinformed and based his proposal on hearsay. We suspect he's being fed by internal enemies of Uganda, particularly political actors in the opposition who think that by invoking America they will wave this dragon called the American as a way to blackmail. Asked what the sanctions mean for Uganda's image abroad, Opondo said it did not mean much. We don't work for foreigners to thank us, to appreciate us, to see us in their good light and in their image. No, we work for the people of Uganda. That's our first constituency. First and primary and the most important constituency is Ugandans. How do the Ugandans see us? It is not the first time Ugandan security officers and senior government officials are targeted for human rights sanctions. Former Inspector General of Police Kale Kaihura and his family members are under sanctions instituted by the U.S. in September 2019. Edward Mhumza, NTV.